Hey everyone, Brian Beeler and Kevin O'Brien coming to you from the Storage Review Lab with something entirely different today. We're working with the grade software RAID card thing that's also an NVIDIA GPU. It's okay. different. It's different. It's very, very different. Basically what this is, is a company called Grade has taken the GPU, added their own uh, AI algorithms and software to manage the software RAID elements when you look at NVMe storage. One of the biggest challenges NVMe SSDs have is how do you harness all of that power, uh, either IOPS throughput, however you want to consider it, and aggregate that storage together. Now there are other options. There are traditional uh, RAID cards, which suffer from some limitations. There's software RAID, uh, Intel's got VROC. I mean, there are a number of different ways to aggregate NVMe drives, but none of them, I think until really we've seen this card have been all that impressive for a variety of reasons. Yeah, it's always been upgrades off of existing legacy uh, type of implementations. And obviously uh, where um, hardware RAID cards have now started to adopt NVMe, it's still hit with that same limitation of everything has to flow through the card and then you're bottlenecked by whatever PCI slot's connected to. Right, so the, the traditional RAID card, there are many of them out there by now, but they're by eight, right? And so what's kind of your headroom on, on storage there? So a Gen 3 card, you're gonna get maybe six gig a second through uh, the PCI slot, Gen 4, around uh, 12 gig a second. But it's kind of realistic. Yeah, we might be able to more than okay. that, theoretical, right. but it's between six and 12 gigabytes per second. But between. two SSDs can saturate that under certain, uh, under, set, under the, the most advantageous workloads, you could do it with two. Yeah, so that's one of the problems that a lot of these guys encounter. So if we had 24 SSDs across the front and we were all gonna do the most optimum workload, you would theoretically need 12 hardware RAID cards to utilize those fully. Yeah, and then you run out of slots or the thing gets ran really, out of really slots expensive. a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. At, yeah. at a thousand bucks a pop for an NVMe RAID card, it does get expensive quickly. Uh, but you have other options uh, software RAID, uh, hypervisor soft RAID. What else is on the list? None of the software RAID solutions have ever really worked well for parity data. It's you go into like RAID 5, RAID 6, and your write performance is just crushed. So it's you can do it. But uh, for write performance, it's just dramatically lower than what you want. Okay. So the grade guys said, hey, Storage Review, you want to take a look at this thing? And we said, of course. And it's kind of funny because we didn't even know it was based on a, a GPU at the start of this. It, it's really um, not that it's mysterious, GRADES or GRADES approach, but it's uh, they really don't want to emphasize that part of it. Not because there's anything wrong with it, but they really want to sell the solution, not just the the technical components. So when it showed up and uh, had the NVIDIA branding on it, we're like, hmm, this is kind is of weird. Is it the right product that I just received? Yeah, and turns out it is. And the uh, the final shipping version will have some grade branding on it, and it'll look a little bit more uh, like their product, like it looks in the photos in our review on the site. Uh, so what did we do? I mean, you took this, you took eight Intel P5510s, put them in, a ser which server, the Intel OEM you know, server? It's one of our Intel OEM servers. Okay. And uh, we looked at um, a Ubuntu environment and we had um, uh, md m for software RAID 5 and then this guy for uh, hardware RAID 5, and just kind of see where things shook out. Okay, so we took eight drives, the Intel 5510s, a good um, mainstream enterprise drive, and we attached them via the grade product in Linux and via software RAID and came up with some really interesting numbers. Let's take a look at uh, those and Kevin walk us through what we're looking at here. So first we're gonna look at uh, four key random read and write and off the bat you can see there's a gigantic difference, uh, just even read performance. You're going between uh, a little bit under nine million IAPS compared to uh, 2.9 million IAPS, same type of RAID 5 environment. Um, and, and, and we're not doing any, I mean, you're not doing any tricky optimization or anything here. No, it's, this uh, is just straight. Yeah, the only the only change really for the software RAID 5 was a um, block size of uh, 16K just because we are running small block and we're running uh, large block as well. And this is FIO VD Bench. What'd you do here? Uh, we were using uh, FIO. Okay. Uh, for uh, random write though, this is where you start to see huge difference when it comes to uh, RAID 5 and RAID 6 software RAID performance. The grade card got uh, 863,000 IOPS versus 52.6. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. And the latency is uh, atrocious by, by differentiation. Yeah, so at oversaturation, I mean, uh, where the uh, grade card just didn't care whatsoever, uh, the software RAID 5 solution just peaked out. 
Okay, well, before we go to the next thing, just from your hands-on experience, you start to see numbers pop up like this. We have vendors come to us all the time and say, our card or our drive or our system or our software or whatever is the best ever. And it normally isn't the best ever because whatever claims they're making, they're sort of... You have to be cautiously part. optimistic. Everyone has really awesome claims, but it really uh, it's rare that uh, something comes out in... Uh, a well, in practice, that performs really well. Right. And, and grade saying their claim is get all of your SSD performance without anything blocking it, which is bold for NVMe storage. Yeah. And for certain solutions, you still need RAID. I mean, there are different ways to handle uh, parity or replication data across uh, cluster platforms, but certain applications still need it. Um, and I think one limitation we had at the start of the review that was uh, it was Linux only. Now mm -hmm. it's Windows and Linux. Windows is coming, we, yes. we are told, in process. So what else do we have here on the performance side? So on uh, sequential uh, performance, there's not as big of a difference between uh, the read performance of uh, grade versus software RAID 5. I mean, there it still has a lead there. The main difference, though, is uh, there's a 10x improvement on sequential write performance. You're looking at 11.3 gigabytes per second versus uh, 1.42. And then again, a, a large uh, latency difference at the same workload uh, level. So there's... Yeah, so what, how do you, what do you write that up on in terms of the rate, the reads being close-ish enough in the in the big chasm on writes? Uh, read, well, read 5, you're going to get the read performance of all the disks. Uh, write performance really comes down to how the parity engine works. And uh, in software RAID 5, there's just a lot of overhead. And you start to see it with just dramatically lower performance. Well, so that overhead is coming at the expense of CPU. I, someone's got to run the calculations, right? And in the grade instance, because they're offloading that computational bit onto the GPU, that's well, sometimes architecturally where you see it. In certain areas, it's not just that the CPU is being oversaturated. I mean, these are 8380s. Right. It's just that the optimization of that uh, parity engine is not that good. And while it would work fine for um, like SAT SSDs or hard drives, things like that, you start to increase performance level and you just you start designing around implementations that don't even have to use software anymore. And that's where we kind of saw the market go. And now there's uh, different vendors that are seeing a way to uh, fill the gap. Okay. So what else do we have then from a testing standpoint? Uh, the last area that we looked at was um, a nice AK7030 uh, workload. And this is one where uh, it's random, it's a mix of read and write, and certain workloads you might see pure performance um, have very fantastic numbers, but mixed read-write type of uh, scenarios, uh, things can drop. But again, this is another area where 1.6 million IOPS versus 101.3 thousand IOPS. Yeah. Massive difference. It's a substantial difference. Yes. So there's, across the board, this card really did everything it's they claimed it would do. Uh, and really, it just comes down to, um, I think, what the final cost might come into sure. uh, that it, uh, part of the uh, system equation. Gosh, but when you think about how much people are spending on, on high-quality NVMe flash and how much performance could be left on the table, uh, that, that math right there gets a little bit scary. Yeah, and to get around it, some people might do like RAID 1, RAID 10, things like that, which might not have as big of a difference, or like uh, RAID 0 or something. But... Um, this is starting to open up some more options for people without dramatically reducing performance. Yeah, well, I mean, we were surprised when this fella came into the lab. We were even more surprised that uh, Grade's claims actually held up really well in, in our testing. So for any of you that are out there considering this product or future Grade products to aggregate and get the most out of your NVMe flash, you know, from our standpoint, it did exceedingly well and is certainly worth a POC to see uh, what your applications do with this card inserted into the mix and with upcoming support for Windows and potentially hypervisors or whatever else Great has coming. It just makes the card more and more flexible over time. So we're looking forward to see what they do from here on out. But uh, for now, we're big fans of the product. Thanks for checking in on this review.